Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. In alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruhu. Verily, all praises is due to Allah, the Lord, the cherisher of this world, to whom all praises is due. We seek his aid and we seek his forgiveness. Ma'udhu billah min syarri anfusina wa min sayi'atina amalina. We seek refuge in him from the evils of ourselves and the evils of all our actions. Man yahdillallah fala madillallah. For verily, whomsoever Allah guides, none can misguide. وَمَنْ يُدِلْ فَلَا هَادِيَ اللَّهِ And whomsoever Allah misguides, none can guide. وَأَشْهَدُ وَلَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَا وَأَشْهَدُ وَنَّا مُحَمَّدًا نَبَدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah who has no partners. And I bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, peace and blessings be upon him, is his servant and messenger. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, mercy and blessings of Allah be upon all of you. Welcome to part two of the beard topic on whether keeping a beard is a sunnah, a practice of our beloved Prophet Muhammad wasallam. peace and blessings be upon him, or is it wajib, an obligation for Muslim men. Remember to watch this video to the very end and to watch all five parts of this video to get a holistic understanding of it from an Islamic perspective. In my last video, I emphasized the vital role we play in guiding and supporting each other to understanding the true essence of Islam and in inviting non-Muslims to embrace this beautiful way of life. Upholding and promoting Allah's guidance is not just a duty, it is a profound privilege and responsibility that we must hold close to our hearts. Today, let us dive deep into the powerful significance of keeping the beard, an act that is not just a sunnah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad wasallam, but a meaningful obligation for every Muslim man. For centuries, beards have been a symbol of masculinity, wisdom, and cultural identity. Before we delve into Islamic teachings, let's start with a couple of thought-provoking questions that might shift your perspective. By the end, you see how the wisdom of Islam aligns seamlessly across broader viewpoints, revealing a deeper understanding of this timeless tradition. Have you ever wondered why the beard holds such deep significance across various cultures and faiths beyond just Islam? From six Orthodox Jews and Christians, Hindus, Rastafarians, and Zoroastrians, the beard is a symbol of identity, spirituality, and tradition. But what does your appearance truly say about your values and connection to your faith? And why did growing a beard become stigmatized by the media, especially after September 11, 2001, when the World Trade Center collapsed, only to rise again in popularity in the West, Hollywood, and even in the LGBTQ community? You heard okay? Notice you've copied my beard. Imagine the impact of embracing a beard, not just in how others perceive you, but in how you perceive yourself. Could following the sunnah, the prophetic tradition, and growing a beard shape your character, influence your actions, and serve as a form of protection against sins? Picture this, walking to a nightclub or bar with a songkok and a beard. Dancing and partying. It's kind of awkward, right? Not exactly the ideal look for a scene. Finally, could something as simple as keeping a beard be a profound step in transforming your spiritual journey and drawing you closer to Allah? Let's explore these questions together and discover the deeper meaning behind this powerful tradition. I hope these questions have helped prompt your reflection and encourage you to have a deeper connection to the topic. Now let's dive into the nine compelling reasons why growing a beard holds deep significance in Islam. In this video, we explore the first five key points, each shedding light on why this tradition is not just essential, but also profoundly meaningful. Be sure to stay tuned for my next video where I'll review reasons six through nine. As an overview, the nine compelling reasons are Point number one, obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, obedience to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Number three, adherence to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's guidance. Number four, adherence to the path of the believers, the sahabas of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Number five, deferring from the disbelievers. Number six, avoiding altering Allah's creation. Number seven, maintaining a masculine appearance. Number eight, conforming to the pure fitra. And point number nine, showing contentment with Allah's command. Each of these points represents a deeper significance of maintaining a beard as more than just a physical trait. It's our commitment in following the path laid out by his messenger, Prophet Muhammad wasallam, embracing the natural and divine order in our lives. So let's look at point number one, obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam expressed that sparing the beard is an act of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa taala. Abu Huraira radhiyallahu anhu, may Allah be pleased with him, reported that the ruler of Yemen, appointed by the Persian emperor Kisra, sent two envoys to the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When they came into his presence, he noticed that they had shaved their beards and had grown large mustaches. Disliking their appearance, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam turned his face away from them and said, "Woe be to you! Who told you to do so?" They replied, "Our Lord Kisra did." The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam responded, "But my Lord Allah, exalted and glorified be He, has commanded me to spare my beard and trim my mustaches." Recorded by Ibn Jarir at Tabari, Ibn Sot. Ibn Bistron verified to be Hasan good by Al Abani. Point number two: Obedience to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Keeping the beard is an act of obedience to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who commanded men to spare their beards in many a hadith. For example, in Sahih Al Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, and others, Ibn Umar radhiyallahu anhu ma may Allah be pleased with them reported that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Closely trim the mustache and grow the beard." We should remember that obeying the Messenger, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in any of his commands is equivalent to obeying Allah subhanahu wa taala Himself, as Allah subhanahu wa taala says in Surah An Nisa, chapter 4, verse 80. May you hear Rasulullah fakada atallallah, wa man tawalla fama arsalnaka alayhim hafido. He who obeys the Messenger thereby obeys Allah. As for he who turns away, we have not sent you as a keeper over them. Point number three: Adherence to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam's guidance. There is no doubt that our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is our ultimate role model in both appearance and actions. Allah subhanahu wa taala beautifully reminds us in Surah Al Ahzab, chapter thirty-three, verse twenty-one: "La kada kana lakum fi Rasulillah uswatun hasanatul liman kana yarujullah wal yawm al akhirah wa zakrullah kathira." There certainly is in Allah's Messenger an excellent example for anyone whose hope is in Allah and the last day, and who frequently remembers Allah. In Sahih Muslim, Jabir radhiyallahu anhu, may Allah be pleased with him, reported that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Verily, the best guidance is Muhammad's guidance." This isn't just a statement; it's a powerful call to align ourselves with the example set by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Similarly, in Sahih Al Bukhari. Tariq reported that Abdullah ibn Masud radhiyallahu anhu, may Allah be pleased with him, said, "Verily, the best speech is the book of Allah, and the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Peace and blessings be upon him." Sahih Al Bukhari 609 graded Sahih authentic according to Al Abani. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam set example with his appearance, including his beard. In Sahih Muslim, Jabir bin Samura radhiyallahu anhu, may Allah be pleased with him, reported that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam had a large beard, recorded by Sahih Muslim and others. Ali radhiyallahu anhu, may Allah be pleased with him, also described him saying Allah's Messenger had a large head and a big beard, recorded by Ahmad and Al Bahaki, and verified as Sahih authentic by Al Abani. Recorded by An Nasai, Sahih Al Bukhari, and Sahih Muslim, Al Bara radhiyallahu anhu similarly described the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as a man of medium height, wide shoulders, and thick beard. Verified to be Sahih, authentic by Al Abani, Sahih An Nasai, number five two three two. Keeping and growing the beard is not just a physical act; it's a direct expression of our love, respect, and the commitment in following the guidance of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It's about embracing his sunnah not only in spirit but also in appearance, reflecting our connection to his noble example every day. Point number four: Adhering to the path of the believers, the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Following the path of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is not just a noble choice; it's an obligation clearly expressed by Allah subhanahu wa taala. Allah subhanahu wa taala says in Surah An Nisa, chapter four, verse one one five: "Wa ma yashakir rasul min ba'di." Ma tabayana lahul huda wa ya tatabi wa iro sabilil mu'minina nuwalillahi ma tawalla wa nuslihi jahannam wa ma saat masiro. If a person opposes the messenger even after guidance has become clear to him and follow other than the path of the believers, we will give him what consequence he chooses and admit him into hell. What an evil destination! All the prophets, alayhi salam, meaning Adam, Noah, Abraham, Lot, Ishmael, Isaac, Job, Moses, Aaron, David, Solomon, Elijah, Jonah, Zechariah, John the Baptist, Jesus, the Sahabas, radiallahu anhum, great scholars, and the righteous of the past 
kept and grew their beards. Not a single authentic report mentions any of them selectively shaving their beards. For example, in Surah Taha, chapter 20, verse 94. Prophet Harun alayhi salam addresses his brother Musa alayhi salam, Aaron addressing his brother Moses, Kola ya bana umma lata khuts bilih yati wala biraqsi. Aaron answered, Son of my mother, do not seize me by my beard or by the hair of my head. In Surah Al Anam, chapter 6, verse 90, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions a number of prophets, including Harum alayhi salam, and commands, These are the ones whom Allah guided, so follow their guidance. Their appearance, including their beards, was part of their guidance that we are encouraged to emulate. There are also numerous authentic reports that the rightly guided khalifs and other companions had large beards. Sayyiduna Abu Bakr as siddiq had a thick beard. Sayyiduna Umar al-Faraq had a big beard. Sayyiduna Uthman Ghani had a large beard. And Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu anhu, may Allah be pleased with them, had a beard that was so wide that it spanned the distance between his shoulders. Embracing the beard is not just about appearance. It's about honouring and living the legacy of those who walked the path of faith before us, aligning ourselves with the exemplary standards set by the best generation of believers. Point number five, differing from disbelievers. One of the profound aspects of our faith is the command for us to be distinct and to set ourselves apart from those who disbelieve. In Surah Al-Fatiha, chapter 1, verse 6 and 7 of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us to seek guidance on the path of righteousness. Get us to the straight path, the path of those who you have bestowed your fear upon, and not of those who have earned your anger, nor of those who have gone astray. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also commands His Messenger, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu not to follow the desires of those who are ignorant, reminding us that those who are not on true guidance are lost. In Surah al jathiyah chapter 45, verse 18, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَكَ عَلَى شَرِيَاتٍ مِنَ الْأَمْرِ فَاتَّبِئْهَا وَلَا تَتَبِئْ أَهْوَى الَّذِينَ لَا يَأْلَمُونَ now we have set you on the clear way of faith, so do not follow the whims of those who have no knowledge of Islam. The Prophet Muhammad warned against imitating others, saying, Whosoever imitates a people is one of them. Recorded by Abu Dawud and others, verified to be Sahih authentic by Al Abani. He وسلم, made it clear that imitating disbelievers leads to being associated with them. A regretful fate for any Muslim blessed with the guidance of Islam. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, linked maintaining the beard to be visibly different from the followers of other faiths. Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhum, may Allah be pleased with him, reported that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, Cut your moustaches and grow your beards. Be different from the Magians, recorded by Sahih Muslim and others. Abu Ummama radiallahu anhu narrated, Cut your moustaches and spare your beards. Be different from the people of the scripture, recorded by Sahih Muslim. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhumah reported that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said, Be different from the mushrikeens. Trim your moustache and save your beards. Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. So shaving the beard is more than just a routine act. It represents the departure from the Islamic teaching and an imitation of those outside of faith, clashing with the core principle that define our identity. Sadly, today many choose to shave their beards to fit in or gain social acceptance, despite the many clear warnings from our beloved Prophet Muhammad In Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, he foretold that Muslims will imitate non-Muslims even in the most senseless ways. You will follow the examples of those who preceded you, a span for a span and a cubit for a cubit. Even if they were to enter a lizard's hole, you would surely enter it. When asked, do you mean the Jews and Christians? He وسلم, replied, who else? Some might ask, what if non-Muslims start growing beard? Does that mean that we should shave ours? The answer is simple. The obligation of keeping and growing our beard is deeply rooted in our faith, not in opposing others for the sake of it. If it's a good and virtuous act, why abandon it? Our duty is to keep it, grow it, clean it, and maintain it with pride. This isn't just about our appearance, it's about our identity, our obedience, and standing firm in our faith. It's about distinguishing ourselves in a way that honors Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.
Stay tuned as I'll cover the remaining four points in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to me on my social channels, Shah Harold, S-H-A-H-E-R-A-L-D on YouTube, and Ferdaus.chia, F-E-R-D-A-U-S dot C-H-I-A on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. And share this video so that others can benefit from this knowledge, maybe grow a beard, and that you can earn the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for spreading it. As we approach the blessed month of Rabiul Awal, we commemorate the birth of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu an orphan who became the greatest mercy to mankind. He brought us to the message of truth, guide countless of souls to the light, and taught us to distinguish between right and wrong. This is our moment to reflect, to act, and to embody the compassion and generosity that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu instilled in us. May Allah Azza wa Jal, most glorified and sublime, accept all our efforts, multiply our rewards, and ease the suffering of every orphan child, especially those enduring unimaginable hardship in Gaza. May He bless us with the strength to continue in this noble work, following the footsteps of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, not only in the sacred month of Rabiul Awal, but in every day of our lives. May His mercy, guidance, and light always be with us. And before I let you go, I'd just like you to know that I'll be traveling to Palestine on the 2nd of November 2024 with Honeyman Travel. If you have any supplications that you'd like me to share with our dear brothers and sisters over there, please write them in the comments section below or you can send me a direct message. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. See you in the next video.